everybody. Today, Rado runs through Transatlantic from designer Matt Gertz, and this is basically the long-awaited sequel to Concordia. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run-through. Although, before you go on, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then welcome to the Transatlantic. Specifically, in this game, we will be sailing or steaming on the North Atlantic, the Pacific Ocean, and the South Atlantic. With more players, there's also the Australian Sea and the Indian Ocean. Although, if you'd like it to be a little bit more thematic and not spend so much time out of the ocean, you can flip all these boards, and then you're going up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States. So there's Baltimore and Philadelphia and New York and places like that. But, uh, it's transatlantic, so we're going to be sailing the Atlantic, gosh darn it. Or again, not sailing. This game is a love letter to the age of steamships. It basically covers several decades as sailing ships like the Leander and the Cuddy Stark here go out of favor to be replaced with this new exciting steamship breakthrough like the city of Berlin or the Arizona or uh, the... Uh, uh, Abyssinia, or the Pomerania, or the Germanic, or many, many other ships that will be showing up throughout the course of the game. Now, I've already got the game mostly set up. I'm playing a two-player game today. I am the green player, Jen is the blue player, and as part of setup, each player gets one of the starting sail ships, one of the last ships out there, and um, also the Scotia is set out here, which is currently, at this moment, at the beginning of the game, the fastest ship in the world. It runs the North Atlantic run, and it has a speed of 15 knots, if you can believe it. It carries 300 passengers and 4,000 tons of cargo. But you know what? It's not going to hold that speed record for long. Pretty soon, we might be uh, earning the blue ribbon from it, depending on what ships we invest in and start running in our fledgling shipping companies. Right, okay. Each player starts with 150,000 pounds and a handful of cards and our little business here. At the beginning of the game, we're equally good at cargo, mail, I'm sorry, no, this is passengers, mail, cargo, coal generation, and speed. But over the course of the game, we can earn more tokens so that our companies can specialize in certain types of cargo and what have you. So. We'll see how that evolves over the course of the game. The more of these tokens we get out there, the more our ships are worth and more points to be had. So, the last thing we do before we start playing, we get our starting money, we get our starting little sail ship and put it on one of the lines. Each player in reverse turn order. So, I am the starting player. So, Jen first will buy any of these ships from the ship market. And then the market will get refilled and then I will buy one. And these are all steamships. These are the first steamships of the game. And then we'll be off. So, Jen is first. Which of these would she like to buy? Now, the uh, cost of them is the bigger number up here in the top right corner. So, the, uh, the Belgian land here costs 60 pounds. It, whenever it ships, whenever you run it to make money, you make 30 pounds off of it. So, you know, it'll pay for itself very, very quickly. But, and remember, we start with 150, so Jen could get that one, or the Arizona for 90, or the City of Berlin for 70. These all came out randomly, and there's an interesting element of this game is there's a few different variants you can play. One of the most important ones is what type of ship market you've got. Now, I am doing the coal-based ship market today, which means if either of us buys any of these three ships, they come with one coal ready to burn so they can run. But if we buy any of these ships, they don't come with coal. So, these ones are implicitly more valuable because for these, we can't actually use them until we generate some coal, which means we have to take extra steps. So, these are probably the ones that Jen wants to grab from, but there's another consideration. Oh, actually, before I get to the other consideration, I should say, if I were to flip this market over, we'd play the standard version of the game <clears throat> where every ship you get, whenever you get it, it comes with one coal by default right out of the gate, but the ships get progressively more expensive because there's like little plus 30s and plus 40s and plus 50s, so they're cheaper to the left and more expensive to the right. Here, they only cost their base, but these ones don't give you coal. These ones do give you coal right out of the gate. So, Jen probably wants to grab one of these, but, but, as part of setup in a two-player game, <coughs> we pulled 18 cards out of the deck of ships that will be joining us throughout the game. And they are put over here, divided into these piles, and this represents the shipyards. These tell us how valuable the five different types of ships are. 
Right now, the blue ships, i.e. the speedy, fast ones, you know, the blue ribbon, the fast ships, are the least valuable type of ship in the game. Each blue ship you have right now is only worth um, two victory points. Uh, because there's just not that much. And on the flip side, green ships, ships devoted to cargo, are the most valuable because there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, this was a random setup. So, Jen, in a perfect world, would like to get a green ship because they are worth six victory points by default. Now, I should say, with three players, there would only be nine cards that were drawn out randomly to determine the starting value. And at four players, the, the shipyard doesn't exist at the beginning, so all ships are valued equally at the beginning of the game. But in a two-player game, in this game, green is where it's out. Green, because so many green cards have been pulled out of this deck, green ships, the cargo ships, are going to be rarer than normal, and they're more valuable as a result. And looking around, the Arizona here is a green ship. Now, I should say, unfortunately, the, the, the green and the black and the blue, they're a little similar. So in certain lighting, it might be kind of hard to tell. But this is, in fact, green. This is, in fact, black. You know, Sitting here in a well-lit room, I can tell the difference. But it might be tricky if the uh, room is darker or depending on how the camera's picking things up, I don't know. So anyway, so Jen's thing is she wants to get this. It would cost her 90. Um, and the problem is it won't come with coal, so she won't be able to run the thing until she buys some coal. But on the flip side, it is by far the most valuable ship out there. So Jen is first. So does she go for that? Or, let's see, black ships, uh, which are kind of coal specializing ships, are the second most valuable. And uh, the, 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 Abyssin the Abyssinia here is a black ship. It's worth four points, and it comes with coal. I think Jen's going to go for that. She does actually want um, a ship to start with some coal. So Jen is going to pay for that. And it only costs 40 instead of 90, like the Arizona. So Jen is going to pay 40 of her starting 150. So there's a 50. She gets 10 in change. Jen paid 40 to get the uh, Abyssinia, and it came with some coal. So it is ready to ship right off the bat. Now. Jen has to deploy this immediately. And this is still part of setup. And the rule is Jen has to deploy this into the shipping lane that is currently occupied by her neighbor's sailboat. So I'm her neighbor. The Leander occupies the South Atlantic line. So Jen puts the, the Abyssinia in the South Atlantic line. It's got the coal. It's ready to go. Now, my ship, my sail ship here does not need coal. It's ready to go even without, but this one needs coal. And let's put Jen's captain on here. As a reminder, this is my ship. This is Jen's ship. Now, uh, the board refills, which means everything slides down. A new one comes out, the Columbia. And now I can buy one. And uh, once again, these three start with coal, and the Arizona is still there. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going I'm to... I'm going to blow uh, through a lot of my starting capital and pay 90. So there goes 100. I get 10 and change. And I've got the mighty Arizona. Oh, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. I forgot. One more thing. Let's, before I buy, there was another thing to consider with Jen putting this in the market. And that is the fact that, well, I was talking about how there's the, the variant of what type of market you play. I'm playing the coal ship market, but there's the money ship market instead if I were to flip this over. There's another type of variant as well. Now, everybody starts with the same deck of cards. These are the action cards that we can use to do stuff like invest or you know generate coal or transport goods or use our shipping agent or activate a region or uh, run our own shipyard or be the director or the president. Now, this is a variant. You, the standard way to play is you're a director. This card is in your hand. But the more advanced way to play is the president, which means this card is in your hand. Now, I'm going to be playing the president variant today, which makes the game a bit more complicated. But it's really the way the game was designed. The director variant is kind. It's the standard way according to the rules, but it's kind of like an introductory way to play. And I want to show you everything the game has to offer. So instead of so nobody has a director card. Everybody has a president card instead. And because we're playing the president variant, there is an important consideration when you deploy your ships into lanes. You are trying to put a better ship than what was there already. So here's the situation. Jen has the Abyssinia. Um, each ship has, well, in addition to a cost and how much money they make, they've got three metrics. How much tonnage they can carry, how fast they go, and how many passengers they can carry. Now, Jen beats my old sailing ship, the Leander, in two of those three categories. Carries 1,000 instead of 100, and carries 4,000 tons instead of 1,000 tons. So more passengers, more tonnage, but the same speed. Since Jen's new ship is beating all the other ships in her current lane in two of the three metrics, Jen immediately scores two 
contracts. Um, so some company out there gave her a contract for passengers and tonnage because she is the new queen of the South Atlantic. Nobody, though, gave her a new contract for speed because she's no faster than what's already there. So Jen takes these and she collects them. These are a very valuable resource. Now, if we were playing the standard version of the game with directors, there are no contracts. You don't really care about comparing these stats um, against the ships that are already in a given lane. So that's an important thing. I'm playing a little bit more complicated. So anyway, so Jen did that. She got to contract. So that's another thing I have to think about. Jen saved a lot of money by getting the Abyssinia. I'm paying a lot to get the Arizona, and I normally I could put this you know in any lane I want, but as part of setup, I have to put it in the same lane as Jen. So I'm putting it here, which means again these slide over. A new ship comes out. I've already paid my 90. And hey, let's check how well I did. The Arizona beats Jen's Cuddy Sark in tonnage in speed and in passengers. So I just got three delicious, beautiful contracts. So I paid more, but I got a more valuable boat because greens are the most valuable thing. And I got three contracts to Jen's too. But on the flip side, Jen has a lot more money than me. So we'll see how well that works out for us. Okay, setup is now complete. The game can begin. And like I said, I am the first player, which means on my turn, I am going to play one of these cards. And what do I want to do? Well, here's the problem. My, the Arizona can't do anything until it gets some coal. So I think right off the bat, I'm going to give myself some coal. I mean, I, I, I kind of give you a sneak peek of what all my cards were. The first card I'm going to play is, if I can find it again, coal. There's nothing clean about this coal, folks. All righty. So I am playing this card. And what it says is I can load as many coal units as my current coal production capacity plus two. And I must distribute them evenly amongst all my steamships. So my current coal capacity at the beginning of the game is one. So I generate one, two, three. I have generated three coal. And I have to distribute them amongst my steamships. Now, I have two ships in this game. Oops, I forgot, by the way, to mark the Arizona as my ship. I've got two ships. A sail ship, which doesn't want any of my coal, and a steamship. So I will distribute them evenly amongst all my steamships by putting all three coal here on the Arizona. Oh, wait, ah, I don't use these. These are the markers I put here to increase my coal capacity, my coal generation capacity. These are the actual coal tokens, dirt. So I've got three coal here on the Arizona. That means the Arizona can now be run three times. Jen's ship, uh, the, the, the Abyssinia, can only be run once. And that was my turn. I am done. I, I, I distributed them evenly. And now, interestingly, I've got three coal on here because that's why I generate. I put them all here. The Arizona, no ship can carry more than three coal. So even if I could generate more coal, I'd have to throw it away because I can't put it on my sail ship. The Arizona can't carry any more. I am done. And now, both of my ships are ready to set sail. All right. It is now Jen's turn. She has the exact same cards I do. And she's got to pick one of them she wants to play. And what does she want to do? Let's see here. Now, this is interesting. The Oregon has shown up. It costs 100, but it's another green ship. And remember, green ships are the most valuable in the world. And Jen knows I've got a green ship. Maybe she should go on ahead and jump into the market. And oh, which one is it? The uh, where are you? She could play Shipyard, which lets her purchase one or two steamships from the market. And one of them will be deployed, and the other one will be held to be deployed later. So Jen, remember, she saved cash. So she's got more cash than me on hand. She could go on ahead and quickly get the organ. Um, and now this is interesting. Remember, if we were playing on the other side of this board, the organ would cost 100 plus a whole lot more because they get more expensive the farther to the right they are. But in this game, the farther to the right they are, the less likely they are to have coal. So Jen could buy two ships. She could buy the Oregon um, with no coal. And she could buy one of these over here, like say the Pomerania. So that'd be 100 plus 140. She's got that much cash. And this one, she'll be able to deploy immediately with some coal. And this one, she'll hold on to till later. Yeah, I think the first thing Jen's going to do is Jen is going to play her shipyard card. Purchase one or two steamships and then deploy one of them. How much cash does Jen have? She has 110. So, oh, shoot. All right, no, she only has 110. She doesn't have as much as I thought. To get the Oregon and the Pomerania, she would need 140. So, Jen needs a little bit more cash up in her hand first. So, I think the first thing Jen's going to do is actually, um, no. Right, she's not going to buy Shipyard. She is going to play her transport card. Jen is going to actually try to make some cash. Now, whenever you play a transport, 
First of all, if you have any ships lying around not deployed, deploy one of them. So see, in ideal world, Jen would like to buy two ships right now, um, because one would get deployed immediately, and then one would be sitting in her hand, and then to the transport, because first of all, she would get to deploy her other ship right away, um, and then you'll be able to run it uh, immediately, uh, as an example. So this is a little bit inefficient. Jen is not going to get to take advantage of the deploy a ship right now for free. So she skips that, because she doesn't have any in her hand, and now let two of your own ships transport. Jen has two ships on the board, the, uh, the Abyssinia, the Abyssinia and the Cuddy Sark, and Jen is going to run them to make some more cash so she can buy some bigger ships. So, off the uh, Cuddy Sark, she makes 20 pounds. Off the uh, Abyssinia, she makes 30 pounds. That is 50 pounds she made. Now she has enough cash to make the purchase she was hoping for. Now, the, the uh, sailboats, they can run forever. That's the beauty of sail. They have re use renewable wind. The, the, the Abyssinia, though, just burned through coal to make that 30 pounds. And so, it cannot be run again until Jen generates coal the same way you saw me generate coal. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. She is 50 pounds richer. It is now my turn. And what am I going to do? I could now transport as well, because I've got two ships ready to go. And unlike Jen, my ships can go, my ships could go several times, because I've got so much more coal than her. Let's see here. Um, mm. so yeah, let's go on ahead. I'm going to transport as well. Now there's two, there's three ways I could transport right now to make my money. I could use my transport card the same way Jen did. We each have only one of these cards. They let you pick any two of your ships in the world and start transporting. That's nice. So I could do that right now. Or instead, I could, where is it? I could play my region card, which means, well, first of all, like the transport, I immediately get to deploy a ship for free if I've got one, although again, neither of us have any ships at the beginning, and then choose one region, any of the three regions, and all ships in that region transport, whether they're my ships or somebody else's ship. And um, I get the income off of my ships, and I also get the income off the oldest transporting ship of uh, another player as an extra bonus. So if I used region, I could say, hey, um, Arizona, generate 50 pounds for me. Jen's Cuddy Shark will run as well because it's a sale, and it'll make her 20, and it'll make me 20 also. So I'll make 70, and Jen will make 20 if I use the region. Um, on the flip side, if I use my transport, I could just run the Arizona and the Leander and not stick to one region, and I'll make 70 and Jen makes nothing. Or if I use that region over here, the Leander will make me 20, and Jen, the Abyssinia, won't get to run because it has no coal. So um, the, the smart and timely use of region cards is a big part of the strategy of this game. Now, there's one other way. I said there's three ways I could actually ship right now. I could use my region card, I could use my transport card, or I could use my shipping agent card. And fans of, uh, of uh, oh, uh, I've suddenly forgotten the name of Matt Gert's previous game. Concordia. Fans of Concordia will recognize this. This means if I play my ship agent, I will copy the card Jen just did. Because in my hand, I've only got, if I want to ship a lot, and I do, because I've got a lot of coal, I want to be able to run the Arizona a lot. And if I use my ship agent to copy Jen's transport card before she covers it up with coal or, um, you know, or investing or something, then I can piggyback off of her. Since I've got all this coal, I want to run as fast as possible. So instead of you, because so that means I can copy Jen's transport card, and then on my next turn, I could transport with mine and run this again. And then on my next turn, I could transport with my region card. I could do three transportations in a row and make a ton of cash off of all that coal. And it starts with me t using my shipping agent to copy Jen. So I'm going to copy the last card played by her. Of course, if I was playing with more players, I'd have more people I could copy. Uh, so I'm going to copy, which means, hey, first of all, deploy a ship. Unfortunately, I don't have any ships because I haven't bought any yet. And now let two of my ships transport. I'll have the Leander make me 20, and the Arizona will burn some coal and make me 50. I just made 70 pounds. And um, you know, making money is everything in this game. So a little reminder here, at the end of the game, every 100 pounds is a victory point. Uh, plus, we get victory points at the end of the game for how many rows we've filled up by improving our station in the five different metrics. And all the ships we own that have not been scrapped by the end of the game are worth points. The points they're worth is a combination of the relative rarity, as evidenced by the shipyard, and the matching strength of these different columns. Like, if over the course of the game, I increase my cargo efficiency by two, 
I get to I increase my cargo runs by two. That means every cargo ship I have at the end of the game, every green ship, is worth four points for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every green ship I would have would be worth ten points at the end of the game, or whenever it gets scrapped. So uh, it's a big, big thing, trying to get ships, trying to make them more valuable before they get scrapped, either during play or at the end of the game. And also, just trying to make money, because money is worth a lot of points, too. So anyway, I copied Jen. My turn is over. I made a lot of cash. It is now Jen's turn. And now, Jen was thinking about this before. She's going to do it. She is going to go to her shipyard and purchase one or two steamships. Now, she could have done this right away, but she only had money to purchase one. Ideally, she'd like to have enough cash to be able to be more efficient with this action and purchase two. So that's what she did. All right. And she wants the organ because it's the only other green ship out there. That costs 100 And so she wants to get a cheap ship. She'll get the Pomerania. That costs 40 That's going to cost her 140 And I believe she has what it takes now. Um, so here's 150 pounds. She gets 10 in change, so she is down to only 20,000 pounds of operating capital. But she bought two. She bought the Oregon and she bought the Pomerania. The Oregon came with no coal because we're playing on the coal market, but the Pomerania did come with coal. Okay. And now, Jen gets to deploy one of these into any region she wants. And the other one will just sit in her hand waiting to be deployed later, like, say, when she does a region activity, as an example. So. Uh, and now remember, because we're playing the Advanced Presidents variant, Jen wants to deploy one of these ships in a region where it'll get her three contracts, if possible. If she puts the Pomerania here in North Atlantic to put it up against the Scotia, you can see it loses in, er, it wins in only one category. It can carry more passengers, but it's uh, slower and doesn't carry much time. So it doesn't make much sense to put the Pomerania over there. But the Oregon, if she put that in the North Atlantic, it beats the Scotia on every metric. Jen will get three contracts out of that, which is very, very nice. The more contracts you have, uh, the more you can upgrade your business effectively later on when you play your president card. So. That's pretty attractive. Plus, there's a bonus. Now, this is only true in the North Atlantic. You can see there's this blue ribbon. Um, the, it, this was something, everything in this game is based on history. And um, one of the most important things of the time was winning the blue ribbon, having the fastest ship to make the, uh, the transatlantic run. Currently, right now, the Scotia is the fastest ship in the world. And that's not really true. It's um, you know, because, hey, the Arizona here matches it. But the Scotia is, has done the fastest North Atlantic run. If Jen deploys the Oregon, it will become the new fastest uh, blue ribbon ship. And not only will Jen get three contracts for beating the Scotia in every metric, but she will also upgrade her overall operation by giving her a blue ribbon. And now that means any blue ship Jen gets for the rest of the game is worth two points plus whatever the blue ships are worth. So uh, that means Jen would want to start getting more blue ships, as an example. So. That would all happen if Jen deploys the organ over here. So that's great. That's a very attractive thing to do. There's a downside, though. If Jen deploys this, there's no, it has no coal. So it can't actually do anything. Jen can't make any money off of shipping it. So maybe she should wait a little bit and instead deploy the Pomerania. Now, it would make no sense to deploy this here. but. Um, and in fact, actually, you know, I mean, this is a cheap little ship. I mean, it's, she got it for 30. If she deploys this in the Pacific or the North Atlantic, let's see, it doesn't win on speed or tonnage or it doesn't win on anything. So Jen will get no contracts for this. If she deploys it over here, it doesn't win. It doesn't win on any either. So wherever she deploys this, she will get no contracts. But you know, that's okay. She only paid 30 pounds for it. Um, and if she deploys it, it still makes 40 pounds. Um, I'm sorry, no, she paid 40 pounds for it, and it makes, it makes 30 pounds whenever she runs it. So, um, you know, in three runs, with three coal, this thing will have paid for itself and start turning a profit. Plus, owning this card is worth two points. And remember, the more blue ribbons Jen get by, you know, beating the current fast speed, the more blue... Uh, so, I think because Jen has a blue card, but deploying it right now won't actually get her any contracts, Jen will keep this in her hand. Uh, whoops, but that's me. Jen will keep this in her hand down there. So it'll be deployed in a future turn, and Jen is going to deploy the Oregon in the North Atlantic. Jen gets three contracts for beating the Scotia in every metric, and she gets a blue ribbon. 
for having the new record-holding fastest ship. Although, unfortunately, Jen cannot use the Oregon to actually transport any goods right now because it doesn't have any coal. But it is the, the blue ribbon winner, and so that was Jen's second turn. All righty, and now it is my second turn. And the one thing I can't do, I cannot use my shipping agent to, but I, remember I set myself up to make more money. I'm going to keep on making some cash money now, folks. I will transport. You saw Jen do it before, I'm going to do it now. Now, first of all, if I had any ships in my back pocket, I could deploy them, but I don't. Jen does. Jen's got a ship waiting to be deployed. So I could deploy right now, but I, I can't, so I'm not going to. But now I'm going to pick two of my ships. The Leander, my only two ships. Oh, oops, I forgot, by the way. I should have marked the organ belongs to Jen. That's very important to mark your ships with the captain. So, oh, 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 shoot, I totally forgot. Before my turn goes on, there's one other thing that's very important. Whenever you use the, um, oh, what do you call it, the shipyard to purchase steamships, as you saw, whether you purchase one or two, whenever PIers purchase, except during setup, uh, so setup breaks this rule, but normally whenever you purchase a ship, you take whatever you're taking, and then after that, the leftmost ship still in the market gets scrapped. So the Germanic here will never see the light of day. It goes into the shipyard, and now the remainder slide over, and three new ones come out. The Sterling Castle the Ormuz, and the Britannia. All right, no more greens. Greens are going to be rare in this game. And here's the thing. Red ships just got one more victory points worth. So, um, you know, although neither Jen nor I have any red ships, but red ships have a default victory point value of four, making the Britannia and the Sterling Castle Really, at this point, the oh, oh, or the city of Berlin, because black ships are also worth four, makes them the three most attractive ships out there. Although, it's not just their victory point value, as determined by the shipyard, it's also their stats, because you want to have stats that can beat ships that are already out there, so you can get more contracts. So anyway, whenever you buy ships from the market, except during setup, the leftmost one goes away to change the overall economy of ships, then you refill. Now it's my turn. I will transport. This is going to be my second transport of this first go around. I don't get to deploy. I pick two of my ships. It'll be the Leander that makes me 20 more, and I'll burn some more of my coal on the Arizona for another 50, so I've just made 70 more pounds. Not quite a victory point, because it's 100 points per pound, but I'm just making a lot of money so I can buy a lot of ships all at once. That was my third turn. Okay, and so now it is Jen's turn. Jen, she could copy me and get a second transport, because Jen's already done, but if she wants to copy me, she better do it now. But here's the problem. Jen, uh, Jen has three ships deployed. Only one of them can actually work right now, because she has no coal. So while Jen would like to piggyback off of my transport, it just doesn't make any sense to do it right now. So Jen realizes her ships need some coal. It's time to go get some. Just like me, Jen's coal production at this point in the game is... Um, one plus two, Jen makes three coal. And now Jen has two steamships on the board, so she has to distribute this evenly. One of them goes to the uh, Abyssinia, and one of them goes to the Oregon, and now the other one can go her choice, to, to the Abyssinia or the Oregon again. Now, which one makes the most sense? Probably the Oregon, because when it runs, it makes 50, whereas the Abyssinia only makes 30, so Jen will put this over here. So now, Jen can run the Oregon twice to make 100 pounds, which means the Oregon will pay for itself, and, and, you know, and it'll be in the, in the black, I guess, at that point. Um, plus, Jen will have gotten the ribbon, plus all the contracts. So, Jen made some coal. It is now my turn again. And I'm running out of stuff I can do. I've still got my president card. Oh, here's the interesting thing. I cannot um, play the president card until I have played four other cards. The president can be the fifth card. So I have to play at least one more card before I can play the president card. And playing the president lets me get all of my cards back and reset my hand. Plus, it lets me use the contracts I've collected to upgrade my business venture. So I can't do the president yet. i got to play at least one more. So that's going to be a shipyard to buy some ships. And hey, I got a lot of money. I could definitely buy some ships. Or I could run every ship in a region, which means I would probably come over here because I'd get 50, Jen would get 20, and I'd get 20. So if I run region right now, I'll make 70 more pounds. Or I could invest. Now, investing means I have to spend some of my cash, not to buy new ships, but instead to either uh, in, invest in my coal production capacity, which will give me two coal and one of these coal tokens, which and that, that'll cost me 50 pounds. So I can do that, or I can improve my industry uh, in either cargo, mail, 
or passenger ships. And remember, I like green ships, so if I invest right now, which is what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to play my investment card. This is going to be my fourth card, which means my fifth card is I can keep playing my shipyard or my region, or I can do the president. And I want to get to my president as fast as possible. This is arguably the most powerful card I can use. So but before I do that, I'm going to invest. And now I could uh, make my coal production better, but you know what? I've only got one ship that needs coal right now, so I think I'm, oh, uh, I think I'm going to hold off on that. Although in this game, because we're playing with the coal-based market, increasing your coal production is a very big deal. If we were playing with the other side of the market where every ship automatically comes with one coal, increasing your coal production is, is important, but not super important. But now it's super important. So do I want to invest 50 to give myself two more coal to put them on the Arizona so the Arizona will be completely refilled, I can keep running it, and I can generate more coal in the future? Or instead, do I invest 20 to improve this, this, or this, and put a trade house on a, in a, on a lane where I've got a ship. I don't have any ships in the North Atlantic, so I could put a trade house in the Pacific Ocean, which will cost me 20, or in the South Atlantic, which will cost me 20. And what that means is, I'd be the first to have a trade house here. Every time I transport um, ships in this region, not only will I make money off of them, but I'll make victory points as well. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm investing, and instead of investing in my coal, which I might regret later because I'm going to want coal, but for now, I'm just going to pay 20 pounds. So here goes a 50, and give me 30 in change. So I'm investing 20 pounds, and I like running the Arizona a lot more than Leander because it only makes me 20, whereas it makes me 50. I'm investing in the Pacific Ocean. I'm the first to do it. Now, if anybody else wants to invest a trade house, it's going to cost 30. The third player to do it costs 50. And also, uh, no matter how many players, you cannot have more than two trade houses in a region. So I can't buy all three. But um, now I've gotten the cheapest, best return on investment. My trade house is in the Pacific, which means the Arizona will start making me money and victory points. And I have to choose. What kind of trade house is it? Is it a green, white, or red? Since I like green ships, I have a green ship, they're the most valuable thing in the world, I will. I will make um, my cargo empire even more powerful. Now, that means every green ship I can get is worth six, seven, eight points. All right. Okay. So, that is what I have done. I have invested. It is now Jen's turn. She's still got a bunch of cards. What is she going to do? Well, you know what? If you want to find out, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen and go to the extended playthrough. We'll keep playing a few more rounds. You'll see how all the other cards work. Uh, maybe you'll see some regional shipping where we actually kind of both work together. Um, and another thing, when somebody plays a president card, not only do they get the chance to use their contracts to upgrade, but they start getting to deck build. There are five cards out here at random from the A deck. Eventually, we get to the B deck. And these cards upgrade our, our overall operation and make us much more powerful. So if you want to watch all that business, hit the audio, the extended playthrough, or instead you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.